Hi, I'm Tommy Henderson, and it's been a little while since we've done a video for the NRVTA. I know you may be interested in learning a bit about older motorhomes and some of the pros and cons uh, regarding those. Today, we've got a couple of experts in that area to come together and talk about uh, some of the things that you might want to watch out for. And Tommy, my son, I don't know if I like being called an expert or not, because I heard an expert is X is a has-been and a spurt's a drop under pressure. <laughs> but, you know, experience is a wonderful teacher. In fact, my dad, your grandpa, Floyd Henderson, had a saying about experience. He says, experience is something that happens to you you wish happened to somebody else. <laughs> and when it comes to buying older motorhomes, quite often I'll recommend buying an older motorhome. If the quality is good, I'll say buy an old one. But you have to watch out because there is some albatrosses out there that you have to be aware of certain things. Might look great on the outside, but there can be some problems on the inside. Who are you with? So where are you from? <laughs> I'm Lydia Dubasan, and I'm with Confidence RV. I'm a certified NRVIA inspector. And so I actually took a look at was doing a training with the individual um, on the coach that we're talking about. And we found some issues. There wasn't an inspection pre-purchase. So we were kind of catching up on checking on this rig and seeing what might be going on with it. And we did find a few things on it that were a pretty big deal. Yeah, one of the things that I discovered is that this coach is beautiful, but it had a very poor turning radius. And he was going to be pulling a big trailer behind him. So it was going to take him a long way. It's a country mile to turn the thing around. And that can be an issue, especially if you're towing a car and you've got to get out and unhook that car because you can't back up. So turning radius is one of those things you want to look out for on an older coach. Yep. And uh, that definitely falls within our niche as the chassis experts. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on top of that chassis, though, that's not usually within our area of focus. So... And that's where uh, Lydia having you here has been great. Uh, wh what were some of the problems that you saw? Well, so uh, on the body side of things, one of the things that we look for, we check out wheel wells and fiberglass and we look for damage and that type of thing. So one of the things that I noticed was that there was um, the ride height on, on, the, on this rig is that we're talking about a big rig with the tag axle. It wasn't coming up high enough to, to my comfort for that thing to be driving. And then I looked closer and I noticed on the wheel well, there was actually some damage there on the side in question. Um, it had been, there had been some repair, but it was still currently a little bit damaged. So I contacted Henderson's and I said, hey, can you guys take a look at this rig on the ride height, potential ride height issues before it goes out on a big long trip across the country? Where you've had a chance to shake some of those bugs out of it. So what you're saying is it's not necessarily a great idea to take off on a cross country road trip just after buying a coach definitely makes sense so instead you'd probably recommend getting an inspection done first right uh, what what are some of the safety things that you might find in such an inspection well for example um i'm looking at this on this rig there was some very serious battery problems so we had to get those replaced right away before that trip is going to be taken for sure because that can be a dangerous situation we found a water leak as well and then also the uh, detectors, smoke detectors and the, and the lp carbon monoxide detectors those were probably outdated or the incorrect ones for RV use, so those definitely need to be replaced for safety. So those are some of the examples. I always, I mean, I am an inspector, but I do it because I really believe people should be getting their inspections pre-purchased if they can. Um, and our VTA has put together some fantastic videos on why you should get an inspection, so I would definitely refer people to more of those videos. Yep, absolutely. And yeah, we'll, we'll include a link to you, Lydia, for your Confidence RV, as well as information regarding NRVTA, NRVIA. You can find information on other inspectors and all those other videos. And uh, and Dad, just as, as we wrap up, you, uh, you mentioned something about Albatross. Uh, is there a story behind that that you'd like to share? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's in Chapter 3 of our book. It was a beautiful coach, and it was gorgeous on the outside, but literally the uh, rear end fell out of underneath it. <gasps> In this book, we try to make some of the invisible things visible to help save you grief and understand what is correct and what's not correct on the way an RV is handling or driving. Yeah, thanks, Dad. That, that, that book really is a great uh, great reference for holistically a lot, of, a lot of good info about RVs and what to watch out for, a lot of chassis-specific stuff, but you do, you do get into some other... Uh, stuff as well. That's right. You got a house on wheels and it's pretty amazing what it has to do going down the road when you think about it. So highly recommend somebody like Lydia Services and what we do to maintain that foundation as well. Yep. 
Yep. But thanks, Dad. And uh, we'll include a link in the uh, description below to that book on our e-store as well. So we hope that uh, you found this information helpful. Uh, definitely encourage you to check out the resources we've mentioned. And until next time, we wish you safer and happier driving.